Okay, we're back. And I have um, put a lot of layers of umber on my piece. Um, you can see that the uh, uh, by going by the step-by-step um, -step photos, there are places that we need to leave lighter. And I've done that down here. Here's the shadow from the vase, so you know that's darker. And up and around in here, um, there are places that are are darker over here than there are here. And then this area, of course, is lighter because we didn't put the um, the blue blue green on there. Now, even though this is very dark, I can still see my blue uh, coming through there, and it is giving um, the whole thing uh, kind of a color cast, a blue green color cast. Um, uh, this gets a little uh, weird up in here. It's all tight and everything, and it's difficult for me to, to track and see. So I've left some of these areas um, not filled in until after I'm done with all of the the brown underpainting, the ember underpainting. So, like, this is an area right here that I'm going to need to put the blue on. And there'll be some other areas right in here that I'm going to do all at once after I've got all of my umber in. So I've already done some of this. Um, I have found that these photos to be basically useless. Um, I can kind of maybe see them a little bit, but they're too small. They're too blurred. This one can be kind of helpful with this tulip and, and with these flowers here. It was a little bit helpful. This one is too small and far away to see anything except for the light areas. So what I mainly had been using is the finished photo and so for this um, main rose right here all I did was track the dark um, areas of this rose right here. I also brought this picture up on my computer and enlarged it and so I used um, all three sources, mostly uh, the large one, color one here, because you can just see it easier. And uh, so I've done some of these already, just trying to get a feel for it and see, you know, how well I could do it. Um, this is basically the place where you put yourself into the painting, because you just look for the darks and you put them in as best you can and some places will be darker than other places. I've been using a, a round. It's um, a two round because I can make it uh, flatten out into a small flat. And I've used, uh, held in the same hand, um, a dome blender. You can use a mop if you prefer. In fact, it might be better because um, the dome blender was a little bit too heavy and when I have a lot of um, the glaze and water medium in here in the extender then it just kind of pushed everything around and I had to do it several times. So a soft mop might be a better thing to have in your hand than the blender. And then I also used this tiny tiny filbert. Um, yeah it's a zero moon filbert by Scharf um, to push things out of the way such as uh, when I got up, let's see, let me find a really good place. Um, some of the places up in here in the flowers and right here, um, by the time I put my shading on, it's like I had lost all of the light. So this was a dry brush, and since the area was wet with extender and the paint, then I would just use this dry brush to kind of push things back where I needed them to go. So, um, you know, and then here's the front leaf done where you have the shading. You know you're always going to have shading at the base of the leaf and then down through the, the veins. These leaves are set to the back, so they're mostly shaded. So, first, the first thing to do is to have a dedicated um, extender brush and you want to put extender on the area you're going to be working in. So let's go with this flower right here. You want to have enough on there 
to move the paint but not enough to um, make your paint swim and I'm going to go back to my round and I'm going to uh, put it in burnt umber I've got a messy palette here and then put it in the middle of my palette and then I'm going to take some Cindy's mix which is glaze medium and water and extender and just kind of wet it get a little wet area there just stay wet for you for a minute or two and I'm going to flatten out that brush okay. and as that area dries then I just add more Cindy's mix and more extender to it so um, going by our photo this has shading around the center and a little bit on each of the petals so I'm going to start out with putting this shading around the center and as soon as you put it on you want to soften it out now see that the blender is just a little bit too harsh so let me uh, grab a small mop real quick Let's see I've got one here that one's a little too large okay here's a pretty soft mop so and that's not as dark as I want it to be so I'm going to go back over it again on some of this you may have to wait for it or you blot it and then you may have to you have to wait for it to dry before you can go over again and then I'm taking using this mop to kind of pull that dark area out into the uh, parts of the petals that are close by to the center so then now I'm going to just kind of go around some of the edges and soften and right here now I've lost all of my light area so I'm just going to take this dry brush and I'm going to push some of it back and reestablish that light area okay so I still don't think that's dark enough so I'm going to come back one more time you don't want to try to do it um, very dark the first time you want to do it in, in layers that build up and then all you're really doing with this mop is taking away your hard edges and I'm going to put some on the inside of that circle the center circle soften it down I'm losing my light so I'm going to reestablish that light with my dry brush push some of it back okay and then it's going to come back over here and define some of the edges not all of them we do want that right there so we can separate it from what's behind it and we'll need a dark line right here under the petal of the rose okay so you know you're not there's not instructions to tell you exactly where to go where to do what to do where to put it so just call on what you've learned so far uh, let's see let's do let's do this tulip so we see that our darkest edges are here and here and then we have some dark edges here separating the petals 